Hey photographers, this is the Nikon Z6, which is, you've probably heard by now I've already reviewed. But if you haven't seen my review, here's the link. So what's up? Well, although it's a trend that started slowly, it's picking up steam. Camera manufacturers are adding features to their cameras for free by releasing updated firmware. I'm going to show you the headline feature in the Nikon Z firmware 2.0 I autofocus. So I asked to borrow the Z6 for a second time. This time they sent it over with the two new Z lenses, the 24 to 70 f2.8 and the wide angle 14 to 30 f4. I'll get to those after I autofocus. Now you'll find the update on Nikon's website where you can download it, copy it to the camera. And now it's updated to this year's model. This is Nikon's firmware 2.0 for the Nikon Z6, a similar upgrade is available for the Z7. I was intrigued when it was announced, but really wanted to see it in action. This upgrade adds eye autofocus. The Z6 and Z7 already had face detection, found as custom feature A4. The setting turns on face detect as part of the auto area autofocus setting. The upgrade adds a second selection. Now you can select face or face and eye. And right away there's a note to say that eye detection isn't available during video recording. And before we go out and do some shooting, let's see how it works. Using autofocus single, this is face detect setting. Now press the shutter to focus and Anne's face is detected. Switch to eye detect, press the shutter and the eye is detected. Switch eyes using the control dial or the focus joystick Using autofocus continuous, a focus press is still required to bring eye detect up. With a pan to Anne, you get a sense of how quickly the face and eyes are detected. And as Anne rotates towards the camera, face and then eye also quickly detected. Now, of course, studio conditions and a doll aren't real world. Out on the street, where conditions are less controlled and predictable, faces are still quickly detected, even when they're small, and eyes are detected under very challenging circumstances. It's a different implementation, but it is a comparable and competitive one. We've been shooting with the 24 to 70, and if you are waiting for a sign that this is the right time to get a Z, this could be it. Let me go over the details. This is an optically stabilized lens with five axis vibration reduction. And the first thing you'll notice about this lens is the little LCD panel on top. Press the disc button beside to display the focus distance in meters from 0.38 to infinity. A little more granularity would be nice, particularly for a rack focus in video where this is an ideal tool. The white bar underneath is the depth of field, which changes as I adjust the aperture. Now, it seems as if the focus travel distance from tight to wide is a fairly consistent half turn, whether I go quickly or slowly. The display can be switched to imperial measure, hold down the disc key and turn the control ring, and there's also a brightness setting. But no option to increase the timer, which turns the display off. Press disc to switch to the focal length, provided in 0.5 increment steps to 35 millimeters, and then full integers to 70. And finally, the aperture, which opens to f2.8 and closes to f22. Aperture is adjusted using the control ring. Use custom control assignment to switch to exposure compensation, which displays on the top display panel along with the other settings. And just below the disc button is the Le Fun button, which can be assigned to a list that seems much longer than I expect. And with AF on, it's a very useful alternate to the back focused AF on button. It's a large 82 millimeter filter diameter. The closest focus is 38 centimeters, and the lens tips the scale at 805 grams. It's not rated as parfocal, but it's not bad. Here's a zoom while recording video. Now I'm loving the detail on this sensor. I imagine it's equally detailed on the Z7. The 14 to 30 f4 has the same 82 millimeter filter diameter, and at 485 grams, it's the lighter one. Closest focus is 28 centimeters. There's no stabilization. On a full frame sensor, 14 millimeters is crazy wide with a 114 degree angle of view, and that's really very wide. And it enables lots of interesting images. And there's very little fisheye distortion. Straight lines are straight. The only artifact I notice is that objects at the left and right edges are stretched. 
In addition to a minor aggravation, you must turn the zoom ring to open it. There's a slight retrograde action as it zooms in. And there are two rings. The zoom ring rotates less than a quarter turn, and like other Z lenses in the menu, the smaller ring can be assigned to set manual focus or to adjust aperture and EV. A few little things have been adjusted in the firmware. In the original firmware, the buffer display would get to zero and stay there. And now it updates, and this is most interesting. The buffer seems to recover as it goes. No change to the irrational 200 image limit, though. Now, I complained about the blackout time between taking an image and the image review. That's been shortened, but not by much. Custom setting D5 was electronic front curtain. It's renamed to Shutter and offers auto, mechanical, and electronic front. Icons in the bottom left display the current setting. The silent shooting option remains on the camera menu, and it disables D5 when it's on. Well, hopefully that covers this new version of the Z6 and answers your questions, but I always welcome your relevant questions and civil comments below. Uh, thanks for watching, and honestly, I don't mind if you like or subscribe.